This is Manos Perlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 7 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of an instant uh, chronic total occlusion with a bifurcation of the distal cap. This was a patient, 56 years old, with severe class 3 angina and frequent hospitalizations despite a good medical regimen with nitrates, beta blockers and anolazin. He had undergone PCI of the right coronary artery eight years prior to presentation, and he also had undergone PCI of the circumflex and the LAD for a STEMI six years before. Coronary angiography demonstrated instant occlusion of the right coronary artery inside the previously deployed stent, whereas the left system did not appear to have significant stenosis. despite the presence of multiple stents. The previously placed stent in the right coronary artery was fairly extensive, from the ostium of the right coronary artery all the way to the crux. So in summary, the patient had a CTO of the right coronary with a clear proximal cap, a length of approximately 70 millimeters, good quality distal vessel with a bifurcation of the distal cap, and septals from the LAD to the PDA. The plan was to try crossing with a cross post catheter or wire escalation and retrograde bailout if the previous approaches did not work. We had significant difficulty, however, advancing any wire past the proximal cap due to poor guide support despite having an 8 friends Amplatz 1 guide catheter and long 45 centimeter long seats. We were, however, able to advance a center cross support microcatheter into the proximal right coronary artery, and this provided excellent support that enabled advancement of a Confianza Pro 12 wire through the proximal cap that appeared to be very hard and difficult to penetrate. After doing that, we were able to advance a microcatheter to the proximal cap and then advanced a knuckled filter extinguisher wire all the way distally. Contralateral injection showed that the wire had gone into the posterior lateral branch, whereas the PDA remained occluded. We did several attempts to wire the posterior descending artery using a twin pass dual lumen microcatheter and several guide wires. However, we were unable to advance a wire into the PDA and it is important to achieve as complete revascularization as possible, especially for big side branches, because having side branch loss is associated with higher incidence of periprocedural myocardial infarction, as well as higher incidence of subsequent adverse events. As a result, after failing to recanalize the PDA in the undergrade direction, we decided to go retrograde, especially since this patient had excellent septal collaterals. So this is an example of surfing through a Corsair microcatheter into um, the septal branch and easy crossing with a serial guide wire all the way into the PDA. The Corsair was advanced into the right posterior descending artery. With mild difficulty, we had to push fairly hard, which is the left main guide backing up, but we're able to advance it to the PDA. And then, we used the retrograde wire as a marker trying to advance an undergrade wire into the PDA, which was unfortunately unsuccessful. As a result, we finally performed retrograde true to true lumen puncture, followed by standing of the posterior lateral and the posterior descending artery with two stents, two to five stents. The PLV was deployed first, the main branch was subsequently deployed, restoring flow both in the PDA and the posterior lateral vessel. And then we rewired into the posterior lateral with a pilot 200 guide wire. And after doing that, we were able to do kissing balloons, restoring good flow in both branches. And this is the final result. We, after doing optimization of the proximal stand with an osteal flush balloon, were able to achieve uh, a canalization of the occlusion with nice flow both in the PDA as well as the posterior lateral branch. The patient had uneventful recovery 
and he had complete engine resolution at one month follow-up. So in summary, for the canalizing instant restenosis, having strong guide support can be very useful, especially since instant CTOs can have very calcified and hard to penetrate proximal cap. In this particular case, the center cross support catheter gave very strong support, allowing us to penetrate the proximal cap with a Confianza Pro 12 guide wire and uh, achieve further crossing using various guide wires and microcatheters. The other important message from this case is that having a bifurcation of the distal cap may make the canalization of both branches challenging because the canalizing one branch may lead to occlusion of the other branch. In this particular case, the wire went to the posterior lateral branch and we had to do retrograde crossing to restore flow in both the PDA as well as the posterior lateral branch. However, a fine final result was achieved with flow in both branches. Thank you.